fiscal policy's complications. Um, we're going to talk about the loanable funds market and then how we use the loanable funds market and the demand for investment graph to, sh to demonstrate crowding out. And then we're also going to go through some reminders of how interest rates affect the value of the dollar. And so then we're going we're to apply that to the negative net export effect. All right, so first, let's just go through very quickly what we mean by fiscal policy. All right. So in a recession, we're going to use what's called expansionary fiscal policy. What does that mean? That basically means that we want to, to find a way to expand the economy so that the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right and create a new equilibrium at the full employment level. So in order to do that, okay, assuming we start from a balanced budget, we're going to increase the government spending and or decrease the level of taxation. The net effect of that is that the government spending becomes greater than the tax revenue. Okay? So the cause and effect chain goes like this. All right, government spending increases or tax taxes will decrease, either one. Okay? Uh, when government increases spending, there's a multiplier effect that increases people's income, so consumption can arise. Um, when taxes are lowered, disposable income is going to rise which leads to an increase in consumption. So they both will lead to some, you know, more consumption, okay? Because the AD curve, let's, let's remind us ourselves of this. It is equal to consumption plus investment plus government purchases plus our net exports. So whenever we increase government spending, the AD curve is also going to increase, okay? That leads to the new equilibrium at a, at a at a greater real GDP. We've also got a small trade-off with higher prices. So the price level is going to move higher. And then just as a, as a commonsensical thing, if you're producing more, you need more employment to, to, to increase the production. So employment's going to increase. So that's our cause and effect chain of how expansionary fiscal policy is meant to work, okay? So now we're gonna demonstrate how it, it's not quite as effective as theory or a textbook or, or anything else would suggest, okay? And what we're going to talk about is crowding out. So imagine you go to the all-you-can-eat seafood buffet, and you get there, and there's one person there monopolizing all of the food, okay? Homer Simpson has eaten it all. These people over here have been crowded out. Now... In order to understand crowding out, we have to review a little bit of how interest rates affect investment, okay? And I want you all to remember, when we talk about investment, all right, this is important. Investment is the purchase of capital, okay? It's not stocks and bonds and saving your money, okay? It's about spending your money so that you can make money, all right? So we're going to make the assumption, and actually this isn't an assumption. I have to look this up. It, it will cost you $1.2 million to open a Whataburger restaurant, okay? Now this part I did make up. Let's, we're going to make a, a pretend assumption that your return on your investment will be 10%. So think of that as profit, okay? If you invest $1.2 million, you're going to receive profit of 10% or $120,000 per year. All right, so interest rates are going to affect this. The reason being is because interest rates are either the cost of borrowing, okay, or think about this, it could be the opportunity cost of not saving, okay? So we're gonna say that if interest rates are 5%, that means if you took $1.2 million and put it in the bank, you would earn $60,000. Or if you go and borrow $1.2 million, it's going to cost you $60,000 a year in interest payments. Okay, so that's what we mean by this. Now, if you can, if you can earn a profit of $120,000, would you borrow the money or not save that much money and open up a Whataburger restaurant? The answer should be yes because you're going you're gonna to realize $60,000 more by doing that than you could by saving your money 
or by not borrowing the money. All right? Now, when interest rates are 11%, okay, if they're 11%, changes everything. Now, if you put that same $1.2 million in the bank, you could earn 132000 which is more than the profit you would make on a Whataburger restaurant. Or if you had to borrow that money, your interest payments would be greater than your profit. Okay? So the, the, the note here is that interest rates matter when we're talking about investment. Higher interest rates are going to reduce the amount of investment that takes place. Lower interest rates are going to increase it. So why does this matter with fiscal policy? Let me explain. Now, just like Homer Simpson at the seafood buffet, the government, when they go and borrow money, they, they create some, this crowding out effect. So the first thing we want to do here is I want to explain what the loanable funds market is. All right? This is a marketplace, and in all marketplaces, there's a supply and a demand. Now, the supply and the demand are a little bit different in the loanable funds market. First of all, well, let's, let's finish out drawing this. Okay? The price of loanable funds is the real interest rate. Usually, I just write it out as RII. And then down here, we've got the quantity of loanable funds. Now, it's, it's a marketplace. That means you've got buyers and sellers. Okay? And really, the supply of, of loanable funds, this is really people who are saving. Okay? Just saving. If I put my money in the bank, it's part of the supply of loanable funds because banks take that money and they loan it to other people. Okay? The demand for loanable funds is made up of our debtors, okay, or people who want to borrow money. So the B and the S, that makes it kind of easy to remember, right? So if the government decides that they're going to increase their spending, they either have to increase taxes or go print the money or go borrow the money. And so what they're going to do here is they're going to go borrow the money. So when we, when we demonstrate increased government spending, we're going to demonstrate that the demand for loanable funds has increased. When that happens, real interest rates rise. Okay? Now, let's, let's use a graph to demonstrate what happens to investment. Because that's really what crowding out is. Crowding out means that higher interest rates are going to decrease the amount of investment that takes place. So here we have another graph. This is called the demand for investment graph. Okay? The price for investment is the real interest rate. And, and this goes way back to the first day of school, really. Um, the, the payment for capital is interest. All right? And then we have quantity of investment. All right? Now, since the x, since the y axis is the same for both of these graphs, sometimes it's helpful just to demonstrate by drawing a dotted line all the way across showing how much investment would, would occur if interest rates were whatever this is. Let's say this is 5%. Okay? Then, when the demand for loanable funds increased, okay, say they went up to 11% from our Whataburger example. All right, now we're at 11 Higher interest rates results in less demand for investment, okay? And the reason being is just because more investments become less profitable, okay? Or I you know, say fewer investments are profitable, therefore there will be less investment made. And so that's how we demonstrate using a graph the crowding out effect. I hope that makes sense. All right. Here's the other thing I wanted to talk about. We need to remind ourselves what happens to the value of the dollar whenever interest rates rise. Okay? So I'm going to draw the foreign exchange market for the dollar. Quantity of dollars. And we're going to compare it to the euro. So the euro price of the dollar is how we'll label it. All right? Now, let's make a note here. When we talk about how interest rates affect 
the value of the dollar, we're really talking about how foreign financial investors view interest rates. Okay? They seek high interest rates. Okay? So for example, they might be buying bonds or they might actually be just saving their money or putting it out there in the loanable funds market to be borrowed. The point is, is that when interest rates are higher, okay, they're going to want to put their money in the U.S. so that they can earn higher U.S. interest. So higher interest rates increase the demand for the dollar. What happens to the price of the dollar? It goes higher. How does that affect exports? Well, when that happens, U.S. exports become more expensive. Therefore, exports are going to decrease. Okay. So we've just demonstrated that when the government increases their spending, okay, let's, let's go to the next slide here. There it comes. All right. We demonstrated a little while ago that when government increases their, their spending, okay, that's going to result in a shift of the AD curve to the right. However, that leads to higher interest rates. Higher interest rates are going to reduce investment. Okay. Higher interest rates are going to appreciate the dollar, which is going to decrease investment, I mean exports. If investment and exports both go down, so does the AD curve, and so does real GDP. So I could demonstrate that by just drawing a third aggregate demand curve, showing that the multiplier effect that we've learned isn't quite as, as uh, effective as, w as we otherwise would have thought. Okay? So whenever we talk about expansionary fiscal policy and we're, and we're talking about the multiplier, we're assuming no complications. You need to be aware, though, that there are complications. All right, the crowding out effect and the negative net export effect. And then, without going into too much detail, all of the opposite will happen whenever we're trying to deal with uh, inflation. In fact, we'll go ahead and, and demonstrate it real fast. Okay, we'll go super fast there. So now, we've got government spending and taxes. So if we're, if we're dealing with inflation, we want to reduce our government spending and or raise taxes. Okay? So reducing government spending, raising taxes, that's going to result in less consumption. AD is going to go down, so we can draw our, our new aggregate demand curve. That means real GDP is going to fall. Okay? We also fix the price level problem, so it goes down. But in order to make all this happen, we have to, to create a situation where there's less people employed. Okay? So that's how the cause and effect chain works with contractionary policy. We're, we're curing the economy of inflation. All right? So how does that affect the loanable funds market? So now we have the government borrowing less money. Okay? I want you all to, to note something here. The government, the U.S. government, is the largest borrower in the history of the world. Okay? So when they change their borrowing, it, it impacts things. Right? So if we're, if we're curing inflation, government is demanding less loanable funds. That drives interest rates lower. Okay? Um, lower interest rates are actually going to end up increasing the quantity of investment demanded. Okay? So we, we would call that crowding in. Right? And then in the foreign exchange market, now you have lower interest rates. That's going to end up decreasing the demand for the dollar. Always label your graphs. That's why I'm going through this. I want to demonstrate to you guys that you always have to, to draw your graphs complete and perfect. Okay, lower interest rates decreases the demand for the dollar. Dollar depreciates. 
That means exports become less expensive for foreigners to buy, so exports increase. Okay? And so it ends up lessening the effect of the contractionary policy. So now you have lower interest rates. Those are going to increase investment. They're going to depreciate the dollar, which increases exports, increasing AD, increasing real GDP. And so your, your actual economy will probably still be a little bit inflationary. All right? 